This is a continued discussion from the previous episode of Nose to Tail, a podcast where we explore the world of aviation lifecycle solutions, insights, and more. Presented by Jet Midwest. You know, maybe give us an idea for people who've gone through their entire career really in one product line. Mm -hmm. Has there been a piece of that product line that maybe has been either the most rewarding project or maybe is that piece that sticks out to you the most? I think when we started to get into military and what we can do is basically helicopters and we do helicopter floats and we got to see a little bit a different side of that. We started attending military shows, which I'm going to next week. And that, for me, I thought that was a really great thing. My dad was veterans, had lots in the family and stuff. So it was nice to see that and have that interaction with that group that we had not normally done. And then we've expanded that. So it was good to see that product line come on. So how has the outside sales world changed when you go from a commercial airline perspective to you know, a government-owned military operation? How, how is, what's the difference Well, we there? change constantly because you're going to commercial airline, you're going to corporate operators, you're going to the onesie twosie, you know, guy that owns a plane here or just needs that helicopter to fly around his property, which I aspire to. And <laughs> then, then you do the military. So it's, again, it's different mindsets, each one, and you've got to be able to roll right into that. So are you a pilot? Oh, God, help me now. Well, you said you wanted to fly a helicopter, so you're going to need someone else to fly. I want to, to do brain surgery, too, but they won't want me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I've had that done. You definitely want someone with okay, experience. So, exactly. You know. Exactly. So, you know, we, we, we often ask the question is to find out what people's favorite aircraft is and, and kind of why, because everybody's has a different personal opinion. Sometimes it's about the way that their industry or their mm -hmm. career has revolved around it. Some people like to talk about it in terms of, oh, this is a great ride. You know, I, I'd be curious what you think. Well, I've always used one airline because it's convenient from where I live to get to every place that I need to be. And I'm always happy that it's the plane that takes off and comes back. <laughs> what the plane is, not a big fan. When I see the guy in the yellow vest get on, my first thought is, well, there's that flight. We're screwed now. <laughs> now I'm going to sit here for another four hours. So I'm, I'm happy about the taking off and landing part. All right. Yeah. If you had a choice. Yes. If I had a choice, which one would I pick? If had a choice, what would you pick? 737. 737. Yeah. Although I've taken a few flights to Asia on my own for vacation and in Europe, and I do like the reclining, sleeping kind of pod thing. That's kind of nice. You, you know, I, I really, as well, from a career standpoint, the international travel was something I didn't do much of really until about 2013 or 14. And so really it's only been about 10 years. And I, too, have an appreciation for these modern interiors and the amount of investment. I took a, a flight from uh, Atlanta to uh, Incheon on a okay, A350 the first time yep. and uh, had Delta sort of three-quarter lean back, which was a great seat, but I, I really couldn't fall asleep because my legs were still too long to quite fit right. Um, and 15 hours in any airplane, unless you're working on it, is probably too many. Yeah. Uh, but it's what it takes to get places sometimes. Absolutely. But again, you talk about everything that has to be done. Oh, absolutely. To have the sleeping pod. And did you ever think you'd be, you know, getting internet on a plane 20 years ago? Right. And, and watching movies and exactly. uh, the, the in-flight entertainment, a uh, huge difference. My first international okay. flight to Europe had no wow. IFE in the airplane. <laughs> And I, I was lucky enough that I had my laptop at the time. I happened to have left a DVD, a movie, inside of my laptop. And so I was like, aha moment, and plugged it in, and I had, I had a movie, and no one else had a movie. Oh. You know, so people were peeking around the seats, seeing what I was watching. But, uh, but yeah, it certainly has been good. And, and, you know, I've had the opportunity as well to be on a lot of variety of carriers and, and uh, certainly depending on their business model, sure. you certainly get a different kind of interior there as well. And when you fly a lot and you get those first class upgrades, you'd be shocked who sometimes you're sitting next to. Because one time I went from Detroit to L.A., it was me and the entire cast of Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I had no idea who they were, except that the little person who was sitting next to me in my head, I'm just like, don't make, don't say little this, don't say little that. And all these guys going, hey, we man. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> so... I would have loved that. It was hilarious. And probably would have gotten myself in trouble if I was sitting next to those guys. Very sweet man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was watching one of their movies uh, on, a, on a flight from uh, Kansas City to Salt Lake. And uh, I'm, I'm watching my iPad and I've got literally covering my mouth. I'm laughing so hard. Oh, and yeah. everybody around me is wondering what I'm what holding God. back. 
Uh, I didn't really tell them what it was, but... Uh, oh, no. I had a lot, a lot of funny experiences in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> so, from your perspective, you know, what's some stuff maybe you want to add to our podcast or maybe that we haven't thought to talk about that's that's really important maybe for for people to hear in the industry themselves or maybe something completely unrelated to aviation well i think earlier what you said about reaching out to young people that is such in fact here, here's a different thing my daughter is head of admissions at a technical school in lexington massachusetts they have an avionics program in this group this isn't just kids going for cosmetology and and whatever and they have robotics there's so much to offer that I don't think our industry is reaching out in the right direction to that age group. Start them in high school so they go to college to pursue that career, and not just in engineering, but in, there's so many facets, as you just discussed, on the aircraft that they yeah. can do. So many different ways to go. And the career opportunities, especially in North America, are really good. They are. There's some really good jobs, and, and we're certainly in search for talent, uh, especially the technical talent. We're in search for that. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's going to be tough to achieve. We work with the Aviation Institute of Maintenance, occasionally getting their students and we let them work a flexible schedule so they can go and work from 7 a.m. to maybe 4 p.m. and then they go to class from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Right. Uh, during the weeks so we're trying to accommodate that. But, but even then it's tough to find students who are really, they still have to be willing to do the job, right? But you're introducing them to it and whether Absolutely. they take it or, or not, you're giving them the opportunity to see. Well, and they come out after two or three years and they get an AMP license and then we're able to plug them right into the organization. Right. And, 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 and they're making really decent salary and, and good jobs. So yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of company organization at HRD, mm -hmm. you know, how fluid is, well, how big is the company? What is employee size? I Probably 200 if I look across the board at the, all the facilities. So do you guys have lots of opportunities for folks as they continue to grow in their career where they've got some paths to maybe follow? That's kind of hard. I mean, mechanic is a mechanic, people doing paperwork are paperwork, you know, customer service is a whole different thing. It depends on, it's a very niche, and what we do is very niche because we only do safety and survival. So anything, oxygen, fire, rafts, vest slides. So there, there's just that, you know, if they want to move from one location to the other, we can certainly do that with that. We're trying to grow Texas so it's as big as California, and we're having absolutely the best phenomenal action there. That's great. But like anything, you know, it takes longer to get this and that approved and that approved. Yep. You know, unfortunately, the paperwork, the government paperwork holds you down, so... It'll well, get there. I, I would certainly say from a Jet Midwest perspective, we pride ourselves on, on A, we're in this constant growth pattern. Exactly. You know, it's steady growth, but just it's constant. And yep. so we constantly have more openings and we'd love to give opportunities to people who are showing success in whatever field they're in for us. Say, hey, we've got this opportunity. We love mm -hmm. giving them that chance to move and yep. create and some to really, grow. Yeah, yeah to and grow they become really well-rounded when they were able to do two or three different things for yep. us. Absolutely. So... Probably going to wind down unless okay. you got something to add. Let me see here. Let me, let me look here. Okay. I'm so proud that I didn't say anything you had to beep out. <laughs> not, not yet. Not yet. It's early still. Thank you very much for Thank being you. here. Thank you. It was this, a pleasure. This I was a lot of fun. It so much. No one says that just because you retire, you can't still be out here with us. Uh, oh, I've already got an it. LLC. Don't worry. All right. There we go. There we go. Her Thank plans. you. Plans. Okay. Now we have a new question. Uh oh. What are you going to do with that LLC? I don't know. All right. All right. Next year. We're going to find out. You may. We're going I may to be, find might out. be sitting out there watching your next interview. <laughs> maybe. And maybe I'll just fly to you and the two of us can sit down and do this again. That'll work. I enjoyed that very much. Thank awesome. you so much. Well, that's a wrap for today. Thank you to all of our podcast listeners. And signing off from Nose to Tail, have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Nose to Tail. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Presented by Jet Midwest.